Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. Well, today is a really exciting day for all of you DJI Mini 2 pilots out there because the company just released a brand new version of the firmware which implements a few things that many of us have been asking for for quite some time. Now, normally when new firmware comes out, I don't recommend you download it the day of release and start flying your quad with it. I want you to wait a couple of days, maybe a week, let other people download it, check the forums, check our channel, talk to other pilots, and see that it's working really well because a firmware update really is like brain surgery on the quad. That microcode is touching every aspect of the quad, and I'm sure they do a ton of revision testing and regression testing against old versions at the factory, but every now and then a bug sneaks through, and you wanna make sure you're not gonna update your firmware and introduce some kind of wonky behavior. My recommendation is, if you're flying your drone today and it's working for you, maybe wait a little with the firmware. Now, I like to download the firmware the day it's released. I'm a bit of a rebel that way, because I wanna make sure that it's working okay, and I'll fly my drone for a couple of days or a week, and then I'll put a clip together, explain to you guys the benefits of the new firmware and maybe any kind of peculiar behavior that I've figured out when I'm flying with the new firmware and that way you know that I've tested it for you. You never want to be the first person to try anything risky like this and I think back to when I used to dive. I spent a lot of time diving off the coast of New Jersey and it was interesting to me that when the dive boat got on location and they threw the anchor down Nobody was in a hurry to get in the water. It always took a little longer than you'd expect to get your flippers on, your mask on, check your regulator. You didn't want to be the first guy in the water. And it took me a while to figure that out. I think it has to do with you're not sure if there are big sharks circling the boat. So if Frank jumps in, you're kind of watching to make sure Frank doesn't disappear screaming under the water. And then you go, okay, there's no sharks. Let's get in the water. Let me be your shark detector. I'll be the guy that tests the firmware and talk about it. Now, I will tell you with this update, I'm not going to recommend you wait. I'm gonna tell you to stop the video right now and download the firmware update, apply it to your quad, the controller, and the batteries, because one of the things they've improved here has to do with the auto discharge of the LiPo batteries, and that's a safety issue, not to mention a longevity issue for the batteries. So definitely download this update and put it on your quad today. Now, I grabbed it this morning. I went outside and flew through five batteries already with it, and I can tell you it's working really well. Didn't see anything peculiar yet, but I'm gonna do another update around the auto discharge on the batteries in a couple of days, because that's not gonna take effect for 24 or 48 hours. And again, I'll explain all that in a minute. But before I do, let me give you the numbers you'll need for the firmware update. So it affects all your products. It affects the drone, the controller, the batteries, and the smart controller. And it's important you get the right versions on each so that they work okay. Oh, and the application too. All right, so let's start with the drone. Uh, the drone should go to version 01.03.000. The remote is going to get updated to V04.11.016. Now, the application, iOS or Android, will end up on version 1.4.3. And if you've got a smart controller, you'll have to update the smart controller. The firmware on that should be V01.01.00.58. And that'll also prompt you to download a new version of the DJI Fly app so that it's compatible with what we're talking about. So what did they fix in this? There are four fundamental things. One of them, I think, is a major improvement that a lot of us have been asking for has to do with the smart controller flying the Mini 2 drone. I'll get into that in a second. But the big one, the one I'm recommending you get the firmware for, is the auto discharge in the batteries. Now, every other drone that DJI makes with LiPo batteries in it, and actually that's all their drones except the original Mavic Mini, which used uh, lithium-ion batteries, which weren't as big a deal. But with the lithium polymer batteries that are available for the Mini 2, uh, lithium polymer chemistry does not like to be fully charged. It also hates to be fully discharged, and you'll never wake it up if you fully discharge it. But most, what most people out there do is they'll charge their batteries fully and then leave them, right? Now, if you do that, that's a bad place for it to be. It's sort of like you're taking a spring and winding it up really tight. Imagine the tension on that spring. That's the problem that a fully loaded LiPo battery has. Now, the chemistry doesn't like that, so it's going to start breaking down. You get all these tendrils building up that you know can cause damage to the battery, and in rare cases, you can actually have a LiPo fire because the battery can spontaneously combust, especially if you get into a really warm environment. So all those things are really bad because it makes it dangerous, right? But more importantly, not maybe more importantly, but just as important, a fully charged LiPo battery starts to break down which means it's not gonna hold the charge as long, it's not gonna hold as strong a charge, uh, you may have a hard time charging it, the cells may be damaged over time. So the discharge routines that are built into DJI batteries are brilliant because these batteries have a smart controller inside the battery that's looking at that charge, and if you're a guy like me and I get goofy and forget and put away a fully charged battery, the controller inside is gonna say, okay, I'm starting a clock. 24, 48 hours later, Rick, if you're not paying attention to me, I'm going to start discharging your battery. So what it does digitally is put a load across that battery internally and drink some of those electrons internally. And that's why the batteries get warm, because you're dissipating that energy in the form of heat. 
And it would do that normally. The problem with the LiPo batteries for the Mini 2 is that if you left them in the hub or you left them in the drone, they didn't start that auto discharge routine. And I've explained in another clip why that's true. Just briefly, here they have to kind of stay semi-awake to watch for you hitting the button to turn this into a hub. And here they have to stay semi-awake to turn on when you hit the button on the drone because there's no power button on the battery. Now, I did say in that clip that to me, that's pretty fundamental software programming where I could set a timer and know that 48 hours later, I could start the discharge. And I, I kind of recommended some things DJI could do. But anyway, their brilliant engineers figured it out. So the update handles that auto discharge capabilities. Now, I can't test it yet because it takes 48 hours for the battery to start the discharge cycle. But as soon as I finish this clip, I'm going to leave it in the hub and I'm going to start a clock and keep an eye on it. And we'll see what it looks like in two days. And I'll give you an update on that. But that's really an important thing that should be done right away. And again, when you're doing the update, it's going to update the controller, the drone, and the batteries. And here's one thing a lot of people forget, that it's only going to update the battery that's in the drone. So if you've got three batteries like me, make sure you put the first battery in, do the update. Once you're finished, power it down, pull it out, put the next battery in, power it back up again. On the app, you're going to say, hey, battery firmware needs to be updated. Go through the update and then do it for the third or fourth, how many batteries you have. Because the worst thing that could happen, and it's happened to me, is I've done the update, I'm so excited to get out flying, I forget that there might be battery updates for the other batteries, and I get out on site, I put the drone up, I fly through a single battery, I slap the second battery in, and I get that warning about battery incompatibility, and it's like, oh, I'm nowhere near a, a Wi-Fi pop, so I can't do the update. So do those before you leave the house, and that'll take care of that problem for you. I think that's great that they did that. I know a lot of us are complaining about it, and a lot of people got really upset, I get that. Now the fix is, is easy, before the update, you could just take the batteries out of the carrier and they'd start the auto discharge. It was only when they were touching the sensing lines here or here where they didn't trigger that update. But anyway, don't worry about it. Do the firmware update. And again, I'll have an update in a couple of days. I'm sure that's going to handle auto dis the auto discharge. All right, so the second thing they did, which is a really big deal if you own the smart controller, and this has been a conversation that I've had a thousand times with other pilots, why don't they update the smart controller to work with the Mavic Mini and the Mini 2? And I've spent a lot of time talking to DJI about it, and I said, maybe I'm wrong on this, I said it was probably a marketing decision because it uses OcuSync, OcuSync 2, OcuSync 2, should be completely compatible. All it would have needed to do is put the profile for the Mini 2 in the software on the smart controller, the telemetry in there, the topology connection, the streaming media back, everything fits. So why would you not do that? And I complained a lot about it. I talked to other pilots about it. The feedback I got from DJI was probably never gonna happen. So that's the information I gave you guys. Well, lo and behold, it happened. So nice little Easter egg. So now if you update the firmware to the levels I gave you before, you can use your smart controller to fly your Mini 2. Now I think part of the reason DJI was pulling back on it is they kind of had it backwards. They were thinking, look, Rick, no one's going to spend $500 on a drone and seven or $800 and $900 on a controller. It's just not going to happen. But that's backwards because a lot of us bought the smart controller with our Mavic 2s or our Phantom 4 Pro V2s or the Mavic Air 2 or 2S. We bought it for a more expensive drone and we happen to fly the Mini 2. So wouldn't it be cool if I can take one controller out in the field and fly all my drones? So I, I made the case, like, you're missing the point. We already own the smart controller and we're buying these new drones. Why not make it compatible? Now, I don't know if I had any effect on them or not, but I'm sure the forums were lit up for a long time. A lot of people have complained to them directly, but all of that's noise in the background at this point because they've updated the firmware. So the smart controller right now can fly the Mavic 2 product, both the Pro and the Zoom and the Enterprise version, and I think the RTK version as well. It can fly the Phantom 4 Pro V2, it can fly the Mavic Air 2, Mavic Air 2S, and now the Mini 2. So again, I'm blown away by the versatility of this product that came out a couple of years ago that DJI is still willing to update the firmware to allow you to use it with future generations of their product. And I know I rave about DJI all the time, but when you get a firmware update like this, that expand, well, this fixes a problem, but expands the capabilities of the ecosystem, that's just benevolent. They don't have to do that. They could very easily say, oh, that was the Gen 1 smart controller. We have a Gen 2 smart controller coming out that works with the Mini 2 and everything we're releasing going forward. They didn't do that. Now, I'm sure they've got a Gen 2 controller coming that'll probably work with the OcuSync 3 for the FPV drone and, and maybe whatever the Mavic 3 is gonna look like or the next version of the Phantom, Phantom 5. But for me, I've owned this for a couple of years, it's my go-to tool anytime I'm flying, whether I'm flying my Mavic 2 series or I'm flying the Mavic Air. Uh, this is the one I use, and now I can fly my Mini 2 with it. That's fantastic, so I love that. All right, two other things they fixed, which are a little nebulous. The first one, they're saying they optimized the gimbal FPV mode. 
That's interesting because this doesn't fly FPV yet. I think it should. I think you should put the FPV goggles on the V2s and be able to fly this. It doesn't do it yet. Do they mean they've updated it for that? Now, I haven't tested it yet. It only came out about four hours ago, so I haven't had a lot of time to play around with it, but maybe that's something they're gonna do soon. What I think they mean is they've updated the way the gimbal is controlled when you're flying. So your FPV view is through the camera. I don't think they necessarily mean slap a pair of goggles on. They probably just mean to view through the camera. And what they've probably done is change the parameter so it's a little smoother when it's moving around. And you can do that through the software as well. And I've got a clip coming out to show you how to do that. But I think that's kind of cool. So that's one that was kind of nebulous. The other one they did was improve the flight stability and require less compass calibrations. Those are good things. Now, stability is important, and the way they're going to adjust the stability is they're doing a lot of testing, I'm sure, in wind tunnels to see how this handles the wind. And what that stability change probably involves is the way the ESCs talk to the motors and react to the internals, checking the balance and movement of the quad. So they're always fine-tuning that stuff. And again, I can't say enough about the continued updates of firmware to improve a product, whether it be stability, performance, safety, usability that's a powerful thing. And I know, again, I take a lot of grief for talking about DJI as, as if they're this amazing company that does amazing things. I really think they do. How many other consumer products have you bought that you buy it and it's antiquated in a year? Like some of the new features that are coming out, whether it be a, I don't know, a media player that's HDMI and it has not the latest version of HDCP or something on it and you can't update it. And oh my gosh, the firmware's not available. You got to buy a new one. This thing came out a couple of years ago, and I was shocked that they updated it for the Air 2, even more shocked the Air 2S, and now the Mini 2. This, to me, is a company that cares about you as a flyer, and I know I sound like a promotional ad here, but I buy their products, I fly their products, and the over-the-air firmware updates that enable new features and functions and allow me to have more fun with my drone are just an amazing thing. All right, so the update itself... When you go through the update, it's an over-the-air update. You can't use the DJI Assistant to do it. A lot of people complained about that. But I like the over-the-air updates. As long as you're within a decent Wi-Fi area and you've got a strong connection, it'll prompt you for the updates. Now, what I found was I couldn't actually update the firmware on the drone until I updated the FlySafe database, which is sort of the NFZ zones. I always do that anyway just to make sure that they've changed something. I, I can get better flights out of it. But update the NFZs, or I should say the FlySafe database first. And then once I did that, it triggered the update over the air. The other thing that could be affecting that is it was just announced this morning. It's all over the boards. Everybody's rambling on, talking about it. Everybody's excited about it. They only have so many servers. So if 5,000 of us try to get into the DJI server at the same time, we're all going to get queued up. So I got lucky and I got it early because I got up early this morning, had a cup of coffee, and I'm like, why there's a new firmware update? Let me get that right away. So anyway, do the update. But again, make sure you roll through your batteries. Make sure you update all your products to the numbers I gave you. And if you're flying a smart controller, do the update over there. I was flying with it today. I'm telling you, it's such a weird experience to have the smart controller and the Mini 2 flying, but it flew great. It flew perfect. So that was it for today. I hope you found this clip helpful. I love doing these kind of reviews, and I love talking about new technology. You guys know that already. So if you've got any questions about anything I've covered today, drop those in the comments below. I promise you, I've got a ton of new content coming this week and next that you're definitely going to want to tune in for. Uh, Drone-related stuff and other high-tech stuff. We're doing a lot of reviews lately on portable power stations. We've gotten a ton of questions about, how can I bring power out into the field to charge my drone. So I've got like eight or nine portable power station reviews coming up in case you're interested in that kind of stuff. Anyway, also, if you haven't joined the Drone Valley family, I say this every time, hit that subscribe button down there. What are you waiting for? We have so much cool stuff coming. We got giveaways starting next month. We got the Drone Valley team kicking off next month. So you're definitely going to want to stay tuned to the channel. And if you need accessories for any of this gear, you know, we have a dronevalley.com website. And again, that helps support the channel. And all the stuff we put up on that website are things that we use ourselves and we've tested thoroughly. So if you need any accessories for your Mini 2 smart controller, any of the drones you're flying, we have a ton of stuff out there. So that's pretty much it for today. So until next time, thanks again for watching and happy flying. Mm -hmm.